Welcome back to Fox Files on the Hill live this Sunday morning. You know, aviation news made the headlines this week. First, two planes nearly collided at Reagan National Airport when both planes were cleared on the very same runway. And second, over on Capitol Hill, senators listened to testimony from a Boeing whistleblower who questioned the safety of the production of the 787 Dreamliner plane. Andy Pastor has covered the aviation safety industry for the Wall Street Journal for decades. It was part of the Netflix documentary Downfall, the case against Boeing, and we're our pleasure to welcome you here into the desk this morning, Andy. I want to start off at Reagan National last week. This is scary stuff because we have seen over the country close calls like this, but Reagan is a very small airport. Um, what do we know and what has to be done when we have air traffic controllers seemingly putting two planes in the same place at the same time? So this is a significant incident and there have been others and about a year ago there was a huge spike in runway incursions, runway clo close calls, but I think it's really important to try to put this into some perspective. Mm -hmm. Over the last 15 years, U.S. passenger jetliners, including um, uh, regional jets, have flown over 10 billion passengers with a single fatality, not a single crash. There's been no jet crash, mm -hmm. but with a single fatality. So you have to put it into some context. The safety of the system has never been greater. Mm -hmm. And yes, you have to work on each of these incidents, and the FAA now is talking about eliminating serious incidents, not fatal crashes. So mm -hmm. we're at a, at a much different place than we were many years ago. Right. And we'll see what happened on this particular incident. But politically, this incident last week comes at a time where there has been a massive debate in Congress over adding more flights to Reagan National Airport. Right. A lot of the local congressional delegation members say, no, don't do that. It's already too busy as it is. Is what happened last week evidence to support what they're saying? I think that we have to determine that. Not clear yet, but what is clear is that controller scheduling, how much overtime they're, they're working, how much time they have between shifts is a significant factor in, in, in incidents, has been in the past. Also, another important factor is the experience level of the pilots in the cockpit. Since COVID, there's been a drop-off in experience level, lots of retirements. So there are factors that, um, that we'll have to examine. Don't assume too much from this one incident, but it is extremely serious, and I think that's how we have to approach it. Let's talk about Boeing, because this whistleblower testimony was an eye opener to a lot of people, and folks who have been following the headlines have concerns as well. What's your takeaway from that? I think both on the testimony and the other pr production problems that have become obvious over the last couple of months. My, my main takeaway would be just as on the operational side, the people who touch airliners, who fly airliners, the controllers who direct airliners, they have mandatory non-punitive reporting requirements. You have to say when there's a problem. On the manufacturing side, that has been lagging. You don't have a culture where workers are able to say, I see a problem and I'm going to see what can be done to fix it. And to spell that out for folks, if you're a pilot, if you're on the flight crew and you see something wrong, you, you have to report it and there's no penalty for you. That doesn't quite exist in the manufacturing process. And not only do you have to report it, if you don't report it, that's when you get punished. On the manufacturing side, partly because the FAA hasn't spent enough energy and effort on it, partly because of Boeing's culture over the years, mm -hmm. that non-punitive reporting um, doesn't, doesn't really exist, and that's what needs to happen with the unions buying into it. One of the things we learned from the House F, uh, investigations into Southwest about 15 years ago was that a lot of this is left up to the airlines, left up to the manufacturers, that the FAA need to get more involved hands-on on this themselves. So. Yes, I think they need more expertise, they need more inspectors, but the fundamental solution is going to be by the workers on, on, on the line. And Boeing, unfortunately, has a long history since the 1970s of serious ethical and legal transgressions. Andy Pastor is an aviation expert. has been covering this industry for decades, and we appreciate you joining us live here on the Nice to be here. Thank you very much.